Good morning, dear students. We are back to our third session of our online classes. Today, I will be talking about this spherical aberration. The first one, I will talk about this spherical aberration. And then, we will talk about the sign conventions. Okay, let us see what is this spherical aberration first. Sometimes the lens can come in what bigger size here, yeah? bigger size lens. So the bigger size lens, we just use a simple word we call as large aperture here. Large aperture. Large aperture simply means bigger size lens. As you can see, when the height of the lens is very large, that will mean large aperture here. So, when the lens becomes bigger in size, the lens starts having a problem, like this. Say so this is the lens, this is the principal axis, and these are the rays falling on the lens. Actually, all the refracted rays should be meeting at the point we call as the focus here. This is the way it should happen. But <clears throat> when the lens becomes bigger in size, what happens is the refracted rays are not able to meet at the focus here. For example, this is the ray I'm taking right now. It can happen like this here. It means these rays the refracted rays are not meeting at the focus here. So in such case, the lens is said to have spherical aberration here. So meaning of spherical aberration is inability of the lens to focus or inability of the lens to make the refracted rays meet at the focus here. So that is what we call as a spherical aberration. So for notes, you please go through the, the web pairs again that I sent to you. Okay. So this spherical uh, aberration appears when, number one, the lens has large aperture. This is the number one case. And spherical aberration also can appear when this ray, that is the incident ray, if it is not narrow. Say, when the incident ray is not narrow. Okay? Like you take a white source of light like this. It's like the light that is entering entering in the room, for example, it has a very wide source here. So when the light has a wider source, at the time, it can produce spherical aberration. However, if the light, the incident light is of narrow, narrow in nature means what? Just like a fine beam, just like a beam in other words, a narrow beam of light. In that case, the, spheri uh, the spherical aberration can be avoided here. It means the cause of spherical aberration will be number one, large aperture, and number two is wider beam of light. So if you use a wider beam of light, it can produce spherical aberration. On the other hand, if you use a narrow beam of light, the spherical aberration can be avoided here. So these are the two factors that cause spherical aberration. Okay then, we'll go to the sign convention, the new sign convention that we often use in mathematical derivations, especially uh, related to uh, these are uh, spherical refracting surfaces. 
Let us say what does the sign convention says. Suppose you have a refracting surface and this is the principal axis. And you keep the object here. Object is kept on the principal axis. Then this is the incident ray. Here is the refracted ray. And this is the normal here. And the normal should be passing through center of curvature here. And I is the image. Image should be formed here. So the sign convention, the first sign convention, the first rule says that all the measurements should be done from the pole. This is P. P stands for pole of the, of the surface. So if, if this is the object, the object distance is taken as U. And if I is the image, image distance is taken as V here. And if C is the center of curvature, the distance between the center of curvature and the pole is what we call as the radius of curvature. So the first rule says that all the measurement, like measurement of the object distance or measurement of the image distance, should be done initially starting from the point P, where P is the pole. Okay? So how do you measure right now? The measurement should be PO, like this, PO is equal to U, or it can be PI. PI is equal to V, or it can be PC. PC is going to be equal to R here. This is the first rule. And the second rule says that, the number two, the second rule says that if the measurement is done against the incident ray, suppose in the diagram, the incident ray goes from left to right. It goes from left to right as indicated by the arrow. So if you do the measurement against the incident ray, let us see, how do we, how do, we do the measurement here? We are measuring as PO, PO like this, which is against the incident ray. That is why PO should be taken as negative. Okay? And if the measurement is done in the same direction as that of the incident ray, then that value is taken as positive here. Now let us see, the incident ray goes from left to right, left to right, and we are also measuring as PI, PI which is equal to V, so PI should be positive here, because we are measuring it uh, in the same direction as that of the incident ray. And what about PC? PC also equal to plus R again here. So this is the second rule. And the third rule says that if you talk about the measurement, such as object and the image height here, for example, say in the lens, you have this uh, object as AB, and let this be the image here. Let us see. This is BDS, or let's say ADS and BDS here. Okay? So in this case, if you are going to measure the height of the object, it should be measured as AB, starting from the principal axis, like this, AB, or it can be BDS, ADS here. But never measure such as BA, don't measure like this, this is wrong. So the correct measurement of the height should be AB or BDS, ADS here. It means the height of the image or the object should be started. I, I mean the measurement of the height of the object or image should be started from the principal axis here. So these are the three important rules that we use in the sign convention. Okay. And the one thing here, when you write this sign convention, we have to follow some assumptions. We are making some assumptions here. The first assumption is that this object should be point in size. Point in size means very small in size and should be located on the principal axis. Objects should be point in size and should be located on the principal axis. Here. Point in size, just like a dot here. Number one. And the second one is that all the angles such as alpha, beta, and gamma, you can see all the angles met. All the angles met with the principal axis 
all these angles are assumed to be small again. So the angles such as alpha, beta, and gamma, which are met with principal axis, all these angles are assumed to be one small here. So these are the two assumptions that we make in order to apply the sign convention. Okay, today, in addition to this, I'll be adding up some more uh, points. Say, here is the medium one. This is medium two here. Okay, and uh, Snell's law of refraction. Last time we have seen that, and using that Snell's law, we have also got the equation for refractive index as C by V, where C stands for speed of light in the first medium, and V for speed of light in the second medium here. Okay, so if the first medium is air, then what C stands for? Speed of light in air divided by speed of light in the medium. So whenever the first medium is air, this refractive index will be known as absolute refractive index here. Okay. So when the first medium is air, that referred index will be known as absolute referred index. On the other hand, if you have two medium, let us say this is uh, water, and this one is glass here. So let V1 be the speed of light in, in water, and V2 be the speed of light in glass. Then the referred index will be one, V1 by V2 here. So at this time, this referred index can be called as relative refractive index here. As long as one of the medium is not air. If it is not air, then you can use this term as relative referred index here. Okay, this is the first point. And second point is that during refraction of light, for example, say, this is the normal incident ray, refracted ray. This is I, this is R here. During refraction of light, if you use Snell's law, mu, say it goes from 1 to 2, 1 to 2 here, this is equal to sine I divided by sine R here. Let us see what happened. The first one is air, let's say, and this one is glass here. So now you can see light is traveling from rarer to denser. So during this time, the refracted ray comes closer or bends towards the normal here. Why is it so? It can happen. Now, this part, how do you write this? It can, write, it, it can be written as mu2 divided by mu1. This is equal to sine i by sin r and if it is glass this is mu2 and if it is air this is mu1 as you know glass is denser than air so you can write mu2 is greater than mu1 here it means in this case your mu2 should be greater than mu1 here therefore if mu2 is greater than mu1 what is this sin i should be greater than sin of r here or simply i is greater than r here so now you can see this i, this r here. So if i is greater than r, what does it mean? It means that instead of traveling along this straight path, if i is greater than r, you know that the ray turns towards the normal. So this is the reason why the refracted ray bends towards the normal when it travels from a rather to denser medium here. Okay, this is a simple explanation. And Another very important thing here, during refraction of light, frequency of the light remains the same. This is the physical quantity that remains the same, the same during refraction of light. Okay? So during refraction of light, frequency of light remains the same. It doesn't change here. It means 
the energy of light is given by E is equal to H nu, where H is the Planck's constant and nu is the frequency here. So what is what is here? If the frequency does not change during refraction, as frequency, if the frequency is not changing at all, at the same time, I see Planck's constant. I see is also constant. So if the frequency does not change, energy of light does not change during refraction of light here. So this is the reason why energy, energy, you can say uh, frequency and energy E of light does not change during refraction here. Okay, this is the brief discussion of the, uh, the basic facts here. So I want you to go through the notes one more time and you can check out the question answer I have, that I have given. I have given uh, you 10 questions along with the solutions. So you please go through all the questions along with the answers. And some of you tell me that, uh, some of you told me that you cannot load the uh, pairs and all. Simply, number one reason is what, due to low internet speed here. So you please try to increase the speed of the internet by changing the position or do something. So if, if the internet speed is good, then you can easily see the web pages here. Okay, then see you in the next class again.